This video is inspired by spy animation in JavaScript by Frank's Laboratory. Hi friends, this is TK and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I will do crazy thing with my own characters and bring it to next level making animation by using JavaScript. It's taken me a lot of time to get here. I have to design my own characters and create a spy sheet. Oh, by the way, you can check out my previous video somewhere right here so you can follow my step to design your own characters. Now we jump to the interesting part, create an animation by using JavaScript. By the end of this video, you know how to change your character action just by one selection. And if you love my character animation, you can download my spy sheet and code on my GitHub. And don't forget to give me a star on my repository, this will encourage me a lot. Now, let's get started. First of all, as usual, in my index.html5, I will give it the title Sprite Animations and link it to my style.css file. I also link script.js, this is where we recall all of the logic and algorithm to implement our idea. Here, I create an HTML canvas element with the ID of my canvas. If you don't know, the HTML canvas element is used to draw graphics on the web page, but don't worry, just follow me. I will explain it in more detail after. In the CSS5, I write some code because I want my canvas to appear in the middle of the page with a width of 778 pixel and height of 625 pixel. In script.js, I will use getElementById method to return the my canvas element with a specified value so I can edit my canvas element through this value easier. Then you need a drawing object for the canvas using getContext. You may be wonder why you have to write this line of code. You can check out the canvas tutorial on w3school.com. I will link below the description. In canvas drawing tutorial, it will show you three basic steps to draw on the canvas with JavaScript. You just simply follow them. Next, I give my canvas the width and height dimensions. It is the same as I gave it in style.css. To bring image into JavaScript project, in HTML5, I add an image tag and give it a sort to my sprite sheet and the ID my image. In script.js, I use getElementById method to return my image element with a value. Let's animate our characters by creating a function that's called animation. To make sure that clear between every animation frame, we use the clear rect method. Let's clear the specified pixel within a given rectangle. I start to clear the upper left corner of the rectangle, so I put 0 and 0 right here. Then I want to clear the entire rectangle, so that I put the canvas width and height right here. To draw our sprite sheet onto the canvas, we use the draw image method. Because I don't want to draw the entire sprite sheet, this method will help me draw parts of my sprite or even increase, reduce the image size. It has 3 or 5 or 9 argument, depending on how you want to control your image. Let's go a bit deeper. The first argument is the image you want to use, so I pass this my image. Then I pass this sx and xy. This is the coordinate of the image where you want to start to clip. For example, with my sprite sheet, this point has the xx 1038 multiple 2 pixel and xy 833 pixel. And the same as for this point, this point, and this point. Next, as width and as height, these are the width and height of the image would you want to clip. For example, I want to clip this attack action image. I started as x 1038 multiple 2 pixel and a SY 833 pixel. 
but not enough. I want to clip a zone of rectangle 1038 and 833 pixel. So I pass them into S width and S height. But carefully, if your ratio of S width and S height is different from the ratio of my canvas, it will stretch the image. That looks so bad, and you maybe don't want it to happen. To keep it easy, I will declare two cons value, spy width and spy height, and pass them right here. Then the last four argument will tell JavaScript when our destination canvas we want to draw. The X and Y coordinate is where to place the image on the canvas. But for our project, I will put it 0 and 0. Finally, the width and height of the canvas. This is the same as the size of my canvas. If not, your image will be stretched or reduced. The request animation frame method tell the browser that you wish to perform an animation and request that the browser call a specified function once to update an animation before the next repaint. If I pass this animate, the name of this parent function, it will just run over and over, creating an animation loop. And right here, I just simply call it animate. Okay, make sure you understand the draw image method before we continue. With this method, I can crop out a piece of my sprite sheet to be displayed on the canvas. By changing these two arguments, you can easily realize that this number must be multiple of spy white and spy height if you want to crop exactly the image. So to display the animation row frame by frame, I just simply increase this number. It allows us to cycle through the sprite sheet horizontally. Now, if I want to swap between different animations, I have to travel through it vertically by changing this argument. It works the same as the previous argument. When I create this number by 1, it will jump to the attack animation, then the jump animation, and finally the dash animation. There's a problem here, whenever you want to change the animation, you have to change these values and run the code again. And definitely, I don't want to do this. And lucky, there's a tool to help us deal with it. We already have a loop. In this loop, I put a variable and automate change it in an amount of time. Look at the first animation, we have four frames. So I says if game frame is less than 4, increase game frame by 1. Otherwise, it will turn back to 0. Okay, I have our animation here. Now, I want to slow down it a little bit by using just one variable. So, how can I do that? If I want the animation slow down twice, I just simply increase game frame every two animation loops using another condition statement. The variable makes sure that two animation loops have been run, and now it's time to increase game frame by one, then it will turn the game frame back to zero. Slow down twice time is probably not enough, I will slow down it a little bit by changing stagger frame by 5. The bigger number you pass into stagger frame, the slower animation is. We also have another method to slow down the animation using an arithmetic operator, modulus. The modulus operator returns the division remainder. For our example, it will always return the integer value between 0 and 4 although the game frame is still increasing. And the same thing with the stagger variable. That looks good, but we have another problem. When I want to change to the attack animation, I have to change two variables, the frame Y and the number of frames. The same thing happened. When I want to change to the jump animation and the dash animation, this is so inconvenient. Let me show you a technique that allows us to swap between different animation states by changing just one value. 
we realized that to display animation, we need to know two information, the name and the number of frames. So I will put them into an object and do the same thing with the order animation. Then I will pack them into an array Now I want to display the attack animation, I will pass it the index of the attack object in animation state. In this case is 1. Two for the jump animation and three for the dash animation. By this method, we just only change one variable and everything has been automated then. But passes one, two, or three here, these numbers are meaningless. So I want to pass it the animation name, it definitely clear meaning. The easiest thing I can do is use another array including the animation names. You notice that the animation stay array and spy animations array have the same order of animation names. Then I use the index up method to return the index up animation name and pass it right here. Finally, I will create a select element. This is used to create a drop down list so you can easily change the animation during the code running. In index.html, I create a new div with a class of controls. Inside, there will be a select element. Give it a label to tell something to user. It's so cute, right? Inside the field, we have four options. Each of the options has specified value, such as run, jump, attack, and dash. Go to style.css file. I will make it look better by some lines of code. Now, I want animation change when I choose a different value in a drop down list. In script.js, I create a constant variable dropdown to re or edit a select element by using getElementById method. I take dropdown and listen for the change event. Whenever the event occurs, this function will be run. In the callback function, I will access to the event object e target. The target event property return the element that trigger the event. In our case, it will return to the select element and the value property will return to one of these texts. Whenever any of these option elements in my drop down is clicked, the player state variable will be set to its value attribute between different animation in my spy sheet just by selecting different animation. Now I can easily swap between different animation in my spy sheet just by selecting different options in a drop down. Hope you enjoyed this video and get inspired to make your own character animation. Before you leave, don't forget to give me a thumb up and hit the subscribe button. I will see you in my next video. Bye!